G'day guys, it is a beautiful, what is it now, Thursday afternoon and we're ready for some shelling. It is going to be an epic day, we're starting at the front side of the beach here first off today. Let's get straight into it and see what we can find. Let's do some digging guys, the other side's still pretty high so I haven't dug up any shells in a long time over this front side. So I'm seeing what I can find. Not much in there, giant uh, broken crown cone. down here you never know what's just below the sand there's another couple of massive uh, sand holes sort of things I have seen success through this my old friend Craig has found a map cowrie doing this. Oh. oh man, that would have been a giant pheasant. Let's see what shells we can find today. So, this looks like a live Hebrew cone. Yep, 100% live. So these ones can't hurt you any more than a bee sting. This one is super alive because, uh, oh. My bad, they're super slippery whenever they're live. Oh man, where did it go? Ah, you know what, I'll forget about that one. Don't want to disturb him too much. Even though he fell down, but he should be okay. He goes through the rough seas. There's an erosa. Holy moly, that's huge. Nice one, Cipray erosa. These ones are everywhere here, guys, if you guys are new to the channel. But let's see what else we can find. It's dropped off quite a lot so far. So we should be able to find some good stuff now. I have two here. We have what I first saw was this coral here. Looks like it's been sitting there a while. Because it's like bare, oh, it's kind of wet. But it's really nice. It's like basically all white. But then as soon as I looked down, I saw something in there. You guys surely know what that is. That is. Uh, it's tough to get in. Oh no, it's gonna fall back down. There we go. Come on, I nearly got it. Oh, it's hard to get to. I might have moved it. There we go. Come on, there we go. Look at that. A nice little bonnet shell and a piece of coral right next to each other. Real shame about that hole there, but hey, it's still pretty good condition. Empty, of course. Pretty sweet. I was looking at a live triton here somewhere as well. I wanted to show you guys, but I don't know where it's gone. Ah, there it is. Look at that. Just a classic triton. These guys are all over Australia. Well, Queensland anyway. They are everywhere here. That was a nice little couple of finds. This looks really nice. Let's look through here now. There's a lot of like clumps of uh, sort of stuff like this, like just a lot of clumps of small rocks and that sort of thing that uh, shells can get stuck under. So you really never know. I usually find a lot more over here than back there where I was. Like sometimes there's something in here. There's a, oh! Yo, I think that might be a uh, Nicobar Triton. It's got some dirt in there. Look at that. That's my first ever Nicobar Triton. And it's empty. It's just got sand in there. Look at that blue, tr the blue calorie there as well. That's sweet. Is that nice or what? How cool is that? Can't believe it. That's my first ever Nicobar. Let's move on to this one. Got a nice, oh really nice blue Triton. We'll put those two straight in the bag. And I actually see another Triton right underneath it. But it looks like one of those ones I just showed you. Is it empty? It, it is empty. Two Tritons in one. 
How nice is that? Nice little surprise. Can't believe it. My first ever Nicobar Triton. That was pretty sweet. Is that a bonnet? A uh, checkered bonnet shell? Buried? No, that's just a piece. Dang. Anything else under here? Not that I can see. I don't think there's anything under here. There is a crown cone here. But it's super old. I'll definitely leave that. There is way too many in my collection. That was pretty neat. My first ever little Nicobar Triton. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else we can find today. Come over here maybe. Oh, it's a bit too high. We found a live snakehead cowries here. We have one, two, three, uh, four, five. That's very nice. Six, seven. Oh, pair of glasses. Whoa. Vogue. They look expensive. Wow. I don't know if like they've been there long either. Vogue. I'm pretty sure that's an expensive brand. That's pretty cool. One of the strangest pieces I've found ever. Anyway, I think we had seven, eight. How many more are there? Nine. Ten, eleven. There's just so many here. There are so many. It's so cool to see. Twelve down there. I'll show you guys. I think that's live anyway. Oh no, it's not live. It's just really old. I want to leave that there as a special gift for somebody walking along. Oh, a pectin. Is this any good? Oh boy. That is stuck in there. Wow. It's definitely been in there for a while. It's broken a tiny bit, but hey, I think I'll keep it. Pectin scallop. Don't mind if I do. Oh, you guys, look at this stuff here. Isn't that the coolest? I don't know what it is. It, feel, it feels like nothing, let me tell you that. I think it might be an, an anemone, like the one from Finding Nemo, like a sort of that. But I'm really not sure. Comment down below if you know. I cannot feel that at all. That is so cool. So I've walked about 200 meters, haven't found much yet so far, but right where I found that urchin the other day, I see a little triton. Look at that. So that's like the cousin of the Nicobar triton that I just found. I've only found like three or four of these ones, so that's really awesome to find. Like, that is beautiful condition. The top is missing a tiniest bit, but hey, that's an excellent color. Can't believe it, two, Nick or two sort of Nicobar Tritons in one session. That is so awesome. This is right where I, it's empty, of course, yep. This is right where I found that giant urchin the other day. I'm pretty sure it was around here somewhere. So, that's pretty sweet. Drop a like on the video for that find, you guys. That one was awesome. Give you guys a nice show of it really good condition all right let's see what else we can find today so i hope you guys did enjoy that little session of shelling that we did there i would like to show you guys all the new shells that i've recently purchased for my collection let's take a look it's been about a month since i recently showed you guys what is in my shell room let's take it so we're going to start off with the coral section here if you guys haven't checked out the video having a look at all my shells, I'll link it down in the description below so you can check that out then come back to this video. But this is what we have new. First up, we have this giant piece of rare blue coral. This is its original color. Check it out. These are very expensive pieces because they take much longer to grow rather than just common white cauliflower coral, anything like that. So these ones are extremely cool. I brought this from Coastal Vintage here in Queensland, in Noosa actually. So it took me a very long time to save up for this. I've wanted it for a very long time. Super nice piece. Let's check out the new piece of other pieces of the shelf. <laughs> Next up again is on the coral shelf, but you guys may have already seen this in one of the previous shell buy episodes. I bought these two pieces from my friends in Harvey Bay. These are cave coral pieces. This is again original color. And I think I paid 60 for this one here and 30 for this one here. 
very very unique very cool in color and shape of course those ones are pretty rare and pretty expensive they're the only pieces that i've actually ever seen so i had to scoop them up because they are very very rare cave coral let's move on to the next so one. the next shell that i've recently purchased is the spindle shell right here it looks a bit strange doesn't it that's because it is a freak this one measures 445 millimeters in length or 44.5 centimeters in length but check out how strange this has formed i'll grab one of my bigger spindles out so i can show you the difference of why it's a freak so here we have my 640 millimeter long uh syrinx arana spindle shell and then here we have the newer spindle shell which is what i just purchased with the freak uh tail there so it's pretty different right i'll give you guys a close up shot right now Stop. so let's talk about this a bit more this one is a giant syrinx aranus just like that one now i'll tell you guys a story about this one i purchased this and the helmet shell up there that i'm going to talk to you guys about after this I purchased both of them from Gumtree. It's like a Facebook marketplace here in Australia. I paid $125 each for these specimens. Uh, the lady that actually sold them to me, check it out, that actually sold them to me said that they were buried underneath her garden, covered in concrete. So she sort of chipped away at all the concrete. She had no idea what they were. And she, I believe she only saw like a piece of like that sticking out of the concrete. So she dug it all up, sort of got the shells out, and she's had them for about six years. I don't know if that story is true. They seemed like really genuine people, so uh, I don't see why they would lie. But it is a very strange story, and especially to have it a freak shell. It's just a really weird story with it, and it's not just an everyday shell, it's a freak. Freaks are very, very hard to find. I've only ever found maybe two or three freak shells ever. And I, I'll, I believe I can show you them in here. Let me see if I can find them. So it appears that I've lost one of my three. It was a snakehead cowrie and it was like dead flat on the top. It was really strange, but I do have the other two here. Now this one is, I don't know if you can see but it is just very strangely shaped. It's got a flat piece on the side of it there. Can you see it? Is it focusing? So that's one of the freaks. And then this one here is a bit freaky because it's like disformed there. But yeah, it is really hard to get freaks. Like I've found probably, I've probably seen 10,000 plus shells at the beach uh, over my lifetime and you know, I've only ever found three freaks. And they're only tiny shells, so imagine how rare that one there would be. Uh, it's hard enough to find a giant spindle, and then for it to be a freak like that, you know, not just have some tiny indent there. It's got its whole sort of tail just totally bent up and really strange. Not broken at all either. So that's really cool. That's a little story about that one. And I'll tell you guys about the next purchase that I made along with this one. Now the shell that I purchased along with that spindle for $125 is this 320 millimeter long uh, queen helmet or Cassis Cornuta. <laughs> A lot of stuff's fallen out of it. It's very old. Again, same story. This one came out of, a, out of a big concrete slab, so that's pretty unique. But and it, to get any sort of helmet shell over 300 millimeters in length is actually pretty hard because my giant one right up there is 351 millimeters in length and that one is incredibly valuable and rare so anything close to that i really like to scoop up you know they're getting very very hard to buy now and even harder to find i've never found a helmet bigger than like that big so it's always a dream for me to find a giant helmet but anyways that's a little story about that one Let's give you guys a closer up shot of this. Got really huge horns compared to those two that I have up there. Like that one is giant. And then check those ones out. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look around it. That's the inside there. No breaks, holes or cracks or anything like that. So that's really good. But yeah, that's it there. It's pretty nice. 
Very good price for the both of them as well. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that's everything for this week's buys. I tend to, I like to go shell shopping, as you guys know, and I save up money like every month of what I make from the website. And that's when I go and upgrade my collection a little bit. So it's all coming back into my collection and I can enjoy something. But that's a little bit about my story. And thank you so much for enjoying the video and dropping a like and subscribe. Bye bye.